The price of Brent crude has hit a 10-month high. What and who is behind the oil surge? It's incredibly sensitive to a variety of economic factors globally. I'm sort of nervous that it continues to climb and it climbs you know, back in over that $100 mark. It's Monday the 25th of September and you're watching Markets with Madison. The price of Brent crude, the oil benchmark that influences our petrol prices, hit 94 US dollars a barrel this month, its highest level in almost a year. Some forecasts, including from Goldman Sachs, expect it to tip over 100 US dollars in the next 12 months. It hit as high as 112 in June last year, when bans were placed on Russian oil imports following its invasion of Ukraine. Now Russia says it's temporarily banning its exports of diesel too, while OPEC limits production even further. So how much damage will this do to inflation? And has it become a weaponized commodity? Z Energy's General Manager of Retail, Andy Baird, knows the oil market better than most. Hey Andy, thanks so much for joining me. Likewise, thank you for having uh, the conversation. Brent crude closing in on 95 US dollars a barrel, Andy. What are your thoughts when you see it surging that much? Um, so I've, I've watched the oil price, you know, all my career, literally, I've been in this business a long time. Uh, and so, on, look, on, on one level, I'm, I'm sort of nervous that it continues to climb and it climbs, you know, back in over that $100 mark. And on the other, I'm just as, as fascinated by the fact that it could equally drop. Um, and so it's kind of like a bit of a watching brief, right? So if you think about this from a market perspective, it's incredibly sensitive to a variety of economic factors globally. Um, and right now that happens to be... Um, you know, sort of cuts in production that have come through from Saudi Arabia and Russia. Tomorrow, it may be something else that, that throws it the other way. So it's a very, very difficult thing to predict. But at the moment, certainly the momentum seems to be that it's, it's climbing. But we are equally coming into um, the Northern Hemisphere. So, you know, the driving sort of season is over. And so that typically does reduce demand. So I have a bit of an open mind, to be honest. Do you have a forecast on where the price might go? Are you in the camp that thinks it might hit 100 US dollars a barrel by Christmas? Um, I, look, as I said, I think you're a, you're a brave man to predict it, to be honest, because if you look at it, you know, traditionally, it just it, it tends to, to drop away a little bit. It's certainly got that indication, right, that, it, that it's sort of heading that way. Um, but even today, it dropped back off uh, a couple of dollars. So that's, you know, potentially a good sign. Um, and there is some tension in there, you know, where, where it hits that hundred dollars, you know, for, for you know globally and obviously for New Zealand specifically. But um, yeah, look, at the moment, I think it's 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 probably going to sit somewhere around that eighty to ninety five dollar mark. And and now that I've said that, I'll be completely wrong. Yeah, exactly. I want to hear your insight on the supply and demand picture. You've given me some of the factors that influence the price, but focusing on supply constraints, obviously OPEC, if it cuts production, that has an impact. We've just seen Russia ban some of their exports as well. What do you think the biggest strain on supply among all of those global factors is? Um, it's really, it's, it's probably the, the broader one is just economic. Um, indicators, right? So the market is, as I said, the, the oil market is incredibly sensitive to, to those factors. So when they think or they see rhetoric that, you know, China's slowing down or the US economy is starting to contract, those are the things that really do start to, to put pressure on, on uh, outside of big external factors like, you know, the Ukraine uh, uh, situation, which, you know, obviously has a, has a sharp impact. But generally speaking, it's, it's broader economic measures of supply demand that, that really do, you know, bring that barrel price up or down. In our local economy, what is Z Energy seeing on the demand side from both aviation customers and us consumers filling up? Yeah, probably a tale of two two quite different um, um, you know, uh, factors really. So air travel obviously um, back in quite uh, strong growth mode. Um, and then at the other side, the consumer demand is, is um, we think is quite, um, is contracted quite substantially. And that's from, uh, we think really primarily from the, what I would call the COVID effect of now people are working from home much more than they ever have before. Uh, and they have permission to work from home, which on one level is great, but that does mean that we're seeing, you know, a lot of those trips, you know, two or three days a week for a lot of people that, that were either taking you know, public transport or private vehicles are not taking those trips. So that that's showing up in, in our um, demand. Interesting. 
Can you please explain to me, and you absolutely know this best, the supply chain from the Brent crude price on the market globally right through to the price that we pay at the pump in New Zealand? How quickly does it translate through? Yeah, so so um, effectively, you know, you have a, a, an oil price, you have a refining cost, uh, you have a shipping cost, uh, and then you have some tax, you know, and, and, and that's affected actually at the bottom by currency. So, you know, the exchange rate matters to us, right? Um, and so those are the sort of the big factors. Once it get and that that oil price is transacted on a daily basis. So you know, on any one day, oil can you know, as we saw today, could drop by two dollars. You know, a dollar on the barrel is literally a cent at the pump. You think about that in, in sort of simplistic terms. Uh, and so, what we try to do is to make sure that uh, we're, we're taking a broader view of that, and we try to you know use this sort of shock absorber effect, where we're trying to take a sort of a a, a sort of a medium term view of, of what the market is so that we can be as competitive as we can and, and be you know offer as good a value as we can to New Zealand consumers so it's very much a, a kind of like a daily game if we think that that's uh you know where, where those cost pressures become to a point where we can no longer absorb them then we we start to to put increases into the market and likewise if prices come off uh, we try to take those prices off in the market as fast as we can. You said a daily game. So is that daily pricing changes? Say if this morning, you know, Brent crude increases and by tomorrow morning when we fill up our cars, we should expect to see an extra cent at the pump? For us, that's a factor. Uh, for consumers, that there's a number of other factors that come into play then. So obviously, you know, as I say, we take a view of, you know, for example, is that $2 today, is that real? Like, not real, but is it is it going to, you know, bounce back tomorrow, basically? So we would just look through that. Um, and then obviously, um, you know, we obviously take a view of what's happening in the market competitively. And as I said, we try to offer as much value as we can to customers. So those are factors that come into play when we make those decisions. We do make about 50 price changes a day across uh, across the market. So, you know, it's, it's a very active market in that sense. Uh, and that's that's generally, you know, a factor, a number of factors that, that may be related to that oil price a couple of days ago, perhaps. And it's related to competitive pressures in the market as well. But just to clarify, you are in the market purchasing oil every day, as opposed to something like an airline which buys it in advance and hedges, correct? Yes. So so our system is is kind of um, fully stocked on a daily basis, right, and working on a daily basis for us, yes. We no longer have a refinery, Andy. How much of an impact do you think that could have or is having on prices? Has it changed the game at all? No, not really. So the New Zealand refinery, you know, had a role, um, and but but again, that was literally playing on an international stage. And so, you know, you changed one out for it for an offshore refinery in terms of bringing finished product in, as opposed to you know some finished product and then crude and refining it. And it, the end result is net net zero, really. So so no no nothing to see there from that perspective. Do you not think, though, that it makes us more subject to that global market and that change in pricing globally because we can't actually refine any of it ourselves? We have to buy it already refined offshore. Not really, because the factors that the, the main imports, product imports, are globally traded. Refining margins tend to be um, relatively competitive, but, but also sort of like they stay within a range, so there's no real advantage there. And obviously the New Zealand refinery is quite small, and so it didn't have some of the efficiencies that some of the larger refineries have. So if you sort of put those together, you do net, you know, net, net zero. Sure. Now this is a bit of a cheeky question, and I only ask because I've seen this term thrown around a bit globally. Do you think that oil is a weaponized commodity? Um, No, not really. So I think it's 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 just one of those. It, it's you know it's such an integral part of our life, right? As a, on a global scale, uh, and I just think it's just one of those factors that is, as I said, incredibly sensitive to to a to a to a massive market, and to you know whether that be you know agriculture, whether it be you know heavy industrial, commercial, you know, it's just it's just a factor of everybody's. You know, you literally can't make a move without oil currently in our in our current world. And so I think that's the that's the broader factor. Below that, obviously there's some other things that, that happen on or that, that carry on or, or, or go on. But outside of that, I think it's it's primarily it's just that it's an integral part of of the world as we know it today. Absolutely. And because of that, it also has a large role to play in inflation. 
Can you talk me through any shifts that you're seeing at Z, perhaps in volume and in sales, because of the price and the contribution that it makes to inflation? Uh, we, as I said before, we definitely see market demand soften um, for, for those two factors. So, you know, oil, or, or not oil, but, you know, when petrol prices get above $3, that that's, you know, has a massive effect on New Zealanders, right? That That is that is painful and we get that. Um, so that that's one factor. Um, but now people have a choice, right? So this is what I was talking about before in terms of it's now acceptable to work from home. So therefore you can carve off some of that demand. And, and to be fair, you know, a, sorry, a percentage of the population can do that. That's not, a, you know, not true for everybody, obviously. Uh, but those that can are doing that. Um, and so that that's how we that's where we're seeing that that's that demand softening. And and that's probably the 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 harder thing right now is that um, you know if that barrel sort of stays around where it is, ideally it would drop down a bit and we'd get a bit of relief at the pump prior to the, to the quarter. So you know, to your earlier question of what am I thinking about, that's what I'm probably hoping for. Uh, but but that's where we are right now, and so that does definitely have an impact on demand. Do you perhaps foresee a higher for longer oil price? Say we do get that situation pushing more people into electric vehicles and making that transformation, that transition happen faster? Uh, it's certainly a factor, right? And that's that's one of the positive outcomes in some respects. Um, but we're yet to see, you know, uh, I guess for a lot of people, we're yet to see a, a, a fully fledged um, secondhand EV market. And that will take a few years to probably start to flow through. And that that's probably where we're at right now, where um, to be blunt, probably, you know, people that can avoid, a afford to buy a new EV can actually afford to generally pay, you know, uh, the fuel price today. It's it's kind of like that, the, the lower uh, socioeconomic groups that are, are harder hit in that respect. Um, and at the moment, EVs are, are they're there in the second, there's a smaller secondhand market there, but it's probably not as fully formed as it needs to be to really make that easier for people. I find it interesting, Andy, that you would see that as positive if we speed up this transition to EVs. Does Z not want to sell fuel anymore? Um, we've always we've always um, been open to the fact that we want to be part of this transition to to a low carbon future that we support it, uh, and we are you know we're in in, in action on that. We've just uh, as of today we have fifty nine uh, charging bays across New Zealand at our sites. We've got another twenty to go before the end of the year. So we are uh, absolutely in action in, in developing that next level or next generation of energy for for New Zealand, uh, and you know that's a big part of of our go forward. Um, business plan. And that would mean we're no longer at the whim of OPEC, right? It would. Yep. Yep. That's right. At some point that that will be a, an absolute feature. But right now that's, you know, we're sort of, you know, at the early stages of that, that journey. Thank you so much for your time, Andy. New Zealand's very own resident oil expert. You're most welcome. Thank you. Namahi. The price we pay at the pump is largely determined by the Middle East and Russia. Andy says he doesn't think oil's become a weaponised commodity, but what do you think? Let me know. Now go put your money to work. Thanks for watching Markets with Madison, the New Zealand Herald show for interested investors. If you want to stay up to date with financial markets, click the subscribe button below and you can watch our other episodes here. Stay up to date with all the business news and numbers as they land on nzherald.co.nz.